morning, this is Mike Burris, doing something a little different this morning, get my exercise in, talk with you at the same time, out here at one of my favorite parks by Lowe's, and uh, it's just gorgeous out, so a little bit windy, so I'll just try to speak up, and it's a very noisy world, isn't it? You know, heaven's going to be a lot different than that, and uh, I'll show you some cool things along the way in this walk. So check this out. This is a morning glory. Isn't that amazing? We got some rain last night. That is a gorgeous. Look at how God makes things. That's a desert plant just shining in its glory. Morning glory. What a gorgeous thing. So Let's give you a look at this park. There's Lowe's behind us. And get in a little sun. There's places for people to, uh, it seems like, camp out nowadays. Most of the border has come right across them into Tucson. And they're just hanging out here at night. That's, and then they, they leave in the morning. Who knows where they go. But... So back to uh, my ugly mug shot here. So getting a workout in. Uh, I had a really incredible night last night. I was praying. I might link down in the description here to the beginning of another video that talks about this uh, healthcare issue that was going on for about four days. And essentially, the Lord told me, uh, was it yesterday, that I had sluggish blood. I went on this run along this park, and I had been really uh, very much uh, having problems with dizziness and uh, really tired for like three days. And so I tried all the things that I normally do. I tried cutting back on uh, salty food, figuring that I had eaten out a lot, so I cut back on that. And then I tried uh, drinking more fluids, and it all did help a little bit. And uh, so that was good, but I still had this dizziness and this tiredness. And so I was really uh, starting to run out of options and trying to push the fear away because it really would make me dizzy, quite dizzy. So, uh, so I said, well, what do I do now, you know? I tried taking more vitamins. I tried uh, eating better, obviously, and uh, still had it after three days. And uh, so I was really, Lord, getting a lot more faith doing these videos on this website uh, about the Lord leads us and guides us into all truth. So uh, I was going like, well, I need some truth. You know, I'm not going to find it in in some Bible verses. Uh, I'm going to need the Holy Spirit to to give me some some truth on this. So I'm uh, doing a little jogging, and I did that uh, a couple nights ago. I noticed I felt better after the gym. And I went, huh, that's interesting. I feel a lot better after I went running at the gym. And then when I was on this prayer run, I was running. I'm kind of jogging now a little bit. I was running and asking the Lord. He said that you would guide me in all truth. I really need that. I need some truth that will set me free. And I saw the words, uh, sluggish blood sluggish blood and I also saw the word balance and I knew that was uh, from something that happened yesterday morning I had a student first thing in the morning and took him out into the garden and he says this is really important for me because I have a very stressful job he runs a, a, um, a beauty salon a nail salon and he, he gets really stressed out on Saturday so Sunday morning he says, this is really important for me to come out in your backyard and look at all your beautiful flowers. And he says, it really brings a balance in my life. 
And I, you know, I said, yeah, that makes sense. And then he must have said that word balance uh, seven more times because he goes, look how balanced the flowers are. And then I even caught myself saying the word balance. Look at how everything's so balanced, you know, the colors and, and the vegetation shapes. And, and I said, yeah, you know, there's such a balance in nature. God just does this amazing symmetry and balance. So I try to emulate that in my gardens. So anyway, they, I kind of thought that was odd that we use the word balance like seven, ten times. I don't know. It's crazy. But uh, he brought that back to me, right? He brought that back to me in my run. He says, balance, Mike, balance. And that's the issue. And I thought, wow, okay, so I'm not in balance. And I thought about what changed in the last two to three weeks. And it was I just standing in one place in front of my computer like six, seven hours a day, like six days a week. And I was just doing all kinds of uh, videos, trying to catch up on my website and loading them up. And it, there's a lot of process to this. And mostly just standing because I, I, the sitting hurts. So I kind of sit a little bit on this high chair, but basically standing. And, and I noticed that I was always, you know, tired and it just seemed to got worse, you know. I'd feel a little bit better after I ate. But I was eating out a lot. I was eating, you know, salty food. And, you know, when you eat out a lot, you're going to get salty food. And so, that's what happened. And, uh, and so, I, uh, when I was running, I felt so much better. And afterwards, for a long time, I felt so much better. And he said, sluggish blood. So that's what it was. And I started uh, doing some more exercise just here in the last day or so. Feel so much better. Uh, still a little problem getting up in the morning because, you know, you're, you're just laying in one spot. And evidently, I was really out of balance doing this, uh, all these videos. I wasn't, I was eating on the run and I wasn't really making the gym like I had been, or going on my bike rides like I had been. And uh, I think this is all bad for older people. You know, your blood has got to move. Your body, blood has got to move. And the guy at the gym said, yeah, your blood has got to move because you're iron. You're probably low in iron. Do you eat red meat? And I said, no, not very much. He says, well, there's a few other things you get iron from. And I'm sure, uh, I th sure enough, the... My multivitamins don't have iron in them. You know, they're without iron. So a lot of men's formulas don't have iron. So he goes, well, that's not good because you need iron to carry the oxygen, right, to your cells to cleanse your cells. So you're really getting toxic. Standing in one place, you're really getting toxic. And you're not getting oxygen to your, uh, to your brain, so you have this feeling of being uh, tired and, and, and dizzy also. That goes into the balance centers of your ear. So basically swelling from, the, from a lot of salt and not moving that salt out of your body. And so that's why the water did work for a little while. But it, it just really didn't work very fast, drinking more water. So it's about moving. you got to get your body moving. So, praise the Lord. Well, it's even better. <laughs> so, last night I was, I was praying, going to bed, and waiting for him to, you know, conversational prayer, prosuke, is not supplication. Supplication is just talking to God about what you need. And so, that's one-way communication. Uh, it's the Greek word, desis. But that's why you see the word prayer and supplication. Uh, but you, pros, prosukamai prayer is used way more in the New Testament than supplication is. Just way more. And go look at my prayer page. But prosuke means a conversation, a dialogue. It's not a monologue. So I just sat there in bed and I was asking the Lord, you know, what else do you want to tell me about this? And I'm just waiting for images 
uh, sounds, um, pictures, thoughts. Uh, he comes to me in different ways. And I'm just waiting, waiting upon the Lord. So I called on the Lord, and I, and I just sat there and wait. And uh, so I saw the word varieties. And, uh, and then I laughed because I had seen this word varieties a lot in some blogs that I've been doing lately. 1 Corinthians 12 uh, talks about how the Spirit gives Christians uh, gifts, grace gifts, by grace. It has nothing to do with merit. It. We don't merit. It's not our talents. It's nothing about us. It's He gives us grace gifts. He just gives it to us at, at the moment sometimes, very at the moment. And He gives it to us to be in us. Okay, so varieties. He uses the word varieties of grace gifts in us. And then it says, and he gives a variety of great services or or ministries, same word, and through us. See, that's something from us to others, right? And then he goes to those other people and he does this energetic, it's the word inner, inner gale. It's this word we get for energy. He works in them through us. See? Amazing. He works in them through us and through the gift that he put inside of us to do, do a service to others. And then it goes into them. That's what healing and all a lot of these things are. It goes into them, this energy of God, and it does a work. And it's very effective. So it's an effective, energetic work. I just thought that was great. But in each case, he uses this word, varieties of different. Varieties of different. So, wow, pick something up. Varieties of different. Varieties of different. Varieties of different. It's a Greek word, meaning varieties of different. So, not varieties the same, but different. So as I praise the Lord, he reminds me of this word, varieties. And he says... You said, Mike, variety is the spice of life. And I laugh because I say that a lot, but I don't always live it. I, I teach that in drumming, you know, switch gears after 15 minutes. Do something else so you don't beat yourself uh, against head against the wall, bloody yourself. A lot of people beat themselves up, trying, 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 pushing, 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 and they get frustrated and they stop. They just stop. So, I'm going to turn around. So he said, well, don't do that. <laughs> and that's what you've been doing. You've been doing that. And then I saw, you know, variety is the spice of life. I, I kind of saw that word spice and I thought, I love food. But it's like, well, if you just eat the same food all the time, you know, it's going to get really boring and it's not going to be healthy. So he's showing me a, a plate of food. And I realize there's other things on the plate. There's other things on the plate. Variety is the spice of life. And and it's like, you know, potatoes by themselves, not good. Uh, over and over and over, seven hours a day, potatoes by themselves. They're good. He says, there's nothing wrong with potatoes. It's not, there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. There's no condemnation there. Romans chapter eight, verse one, no condemnation there. If you hear condemnation, it's from Satan, man. He is accuser of the brethren. So, uh, so he's saying there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that you're eating the same thing all day long. And that's not healthy. So add some variety, Mike. Add some variety. And I see, you know, I see different color fruits, vegetables. I see that steak uh, or a burger. I see variety. He says, that's what I want. That's what I want for you, variety. You'll be happier. You'll enjoy life, right? Variety is the spice of life. And so I woke up this morning with a totally different attitude, right? So I'm not going to obsess. I think that's my net natural tendency is to obsess because, you know, it takes a lot of obsessing to get through two degrees, almost have a third, Masters in Divinity, uh, in the exegetical theology, almost have a Masters about halfway, I would say, probably for human resources through University of Phoenix, 
But I was really obsessive most of my life, trying to be successful, trying to achieve, trying to climb up the ladder in the different businesses I was in. Anyway, he said, balance, man. Balance, Mike. And he's, you know, confirming this, uh, what did he say? Sluggish blood. I see this slug just moving very slowly, just creeping along. You know what a slug is, right? It's a little snail. Just kind of moving around really slow. That's because that's your blood, man. You got to you got to have moving blood. So that's what I got to do, especially at my age, right? 62. So here, this is even better, guys. This is praise the Lord. So in the middle of the night, you know, I asked the Lord a lot probably not enough but say hey you know i got all this downtime in the middle of the night you can speak to me i'm all ears man i'm all eyes all ears all heart you know nothing to stop anything you know no no busyness busy 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 you know like martha busy 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 and then not like mary just sitting there at the feet of jesus what do you want to say lord i'm all ears i all eyes all heart Wow. So at night, there's nothing to block that. So I just say, God, go for it. And so a lot of times I get God dreams. Go look at God messages. Really, really awesome. God messages. So, whew. So this is a workout. So uh, I have this dream. It's clear as day. I can still see it. I see this enemy support. I, I see this uh, army supply chain, right? I see this army su supply chain. I see vehicles. Uh, I see men and s soldiers. I see uh, there's a war going on. I can hear the sounds of gunfire, uh, explosions, and these guys are behind enemy lines. It's a whole bunch of people uh, well, it looks like people, it looks like, you know, army men, and they're behind enemy lines. And I'm going, wow, I really gravitated, my eyes really gravitated on this, in this dream, on the communications uh, officer. He's got his pack, his radio, just like in the old war movies. And what he's doing is calling in strikes to his allies, to his, his men on the other side of the border. He's calling in strikes. What do you mean by that? He's calling in mortar shells, you know, the location. He's telling them the enemy is over here. Here's the location. Send over your mortars. And also, these big artillery guns, big guns. They're called big guns, artillery guns. Um, you've seen them in old movies. They, they, they just boom. They send these shells. Huge explosions, Horowitzers, Horowitzers, they call them. Anyway, big guns. And also, bombing strikes, uh, strafes. Uh, the, the planes come in, and they lay down carpet bombing of the, bo uh, of the enemy. They just come in and lay down carpet bombs. And also napalm. They burn down the jungle. So, um, where they are at. So, it's pretty intense. So he's calling in the coordinates for this. It's awesome to watch this in this dream. And I'm going like, wow, this is great. I can see in color and everything. It's great. So uh, I realize that they're talking back and forth. It's not that they're, he's just calling in coordinates. He's actually getting commands. Uh, they're talking to him. And so they're having this two-way conversation. And, the, and so I realize... This is exactly what prayer is. And prosukamai is a verb. Prosuke is, a, is the noun. So they're having this conversation. And then I realized something even cooler. That these are angels. They're angels of God. Communicating back and forth on different sides of the battle lines. And uh, they're calling in weapon, weapons fire. And it's awesome. It's amazing that God has infiltrators in the enemy territory. And he has a lot of these vehicles and men, and they're behind territory, but they're actually angels, the servants of God. 
and he tells me as I'm kind of waking up from this and I'm just staring at this dream a lot of times I just open my eyes up and I'm still staring at this dream he tells me that's what prayer is that's what real prayer is and then he tells me that he reminds me a lot of times he shows me things from the past <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 6 I believe verse 10 Paul goes into spiritual warfare putting on the full armor the whole armor of God so that you can take your stand against the schemes of the devil right the devil has a huge army a huge army of angels a huge army of demons uh, you say what's the difference between angels and demons well demons are mutated created beings his attempt at creation they're all mutants if you ever have people describe what they see in hell they see these horribly mutated beings right so he's very intelligent he's being number one angel god created and he tries to use that knowledge that technology uh genetic technology to breed um or and create uh mutants uh, you know demons to work for him they're his minions they're on the bottom of the stack they're not they're not angels at all but they're on the bottom of the stack so uh they're they're his army essentially and they go out and do his bidding so that's what's going on there's a war going on the angels are like uh paul uses these different words for different layers of authority in hell and uh i can't tell you off the bat what they are but uh they're like the archangels they're the, they're like the generals and then there's uh well, there's people under them there's angels under them so just a hierarchy i think there's six six or seven layers anyway don't quote me on that it's been a while but he tells me that when paul talks about take up literally take out of your sheath and put it you know with your hand take it up and start swinging the sword of the spirit and you're like well this is a not just a defensive this is not just armor anymore so it's pretty exciting wow that's crazy yikes whoa crazy it's a crazy world we live in wow so um so it's not just defensive it's not just a breastplate or a helmet or something it's a sword it's the swing it's to do some serious harm and he tells me that he says take up the sword of the spirit which paul says is the word of god now people just read english and they don't realize it. they did not write in english <laughs> it's not any writings that paul's talking about he considered all the writings rubbish he went from writings to the spirit he said i don't have a ministry of the letter that's writings grama where we get word grammar but of the holy spirit where the holy spirit writes directly on our hearts his will and so that he goes that's the ministry that i'm involved in i don't know what you're involved in but in letters is not his ministry and so he certainly would not uh he would cringe he would absolutely cry out and and go shame 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 i can't believe you guys did this you did this to my writings you turned it into the very thing that i turned my back on give me a break so he said um the word of god there is the word rhema which always go to the rhema page which always means directly spoken directly heard in the present moment word so like i'm speaking to you right now it's rhema the rhema of god is directly spoken directly heard in the present moment so you can go look at that that's the greek they wrote in greek they didn't write in english so our english is very misleading there's different words for love in greek it's not just the word love there's different words for everything english just lumps into one word and they all mean something different absolutely eros is sexual love you know phileo is brotherly love uh, agape is unconditional love there and it goes on there's six words so you can't read you can't build your doctrine around english for sure so he tells me uh the sword of the spirit it says right there is praying by the means of the spirit the sword 
right, of God that we are supposed to swing against the enemy is praying by the means of the Spirit. And that's that word prosukama. That's a conversation. That is not just talk, talk, talk. That's listen, listen, listen. It's a balance. There's that word balance. And we know that when he talks about praying in, by the means of the Spirit, in 1 Corinthians 14, 14 through 15, and Jude 20 talks about this, uses almost the same words. It's not talking. Oh, look at this. You guys got to see this. Look at that. Wow, these are those gigantic morning, morning glories. Look at that. Giant tubes. Wow, look at that. Isn't that amazing? And there's just giant plants. Look at this. Wow. That is a giant plant. Somebody, somehow these flew in, the seeds, and they're just growing there. Wow. So, that sort of spirit, praying by the means of the spirit, he says, is praying by tongues. You know, the tongues. Glossa, which is supernatural tongues of the spirit. It's the language of the spirit. It says, I pray by the spirit that belongs to me right? Belongs to me. The Spirit belongs to me. The Holy Spirit belongs to me. It's definitely talking about the Spirit of God. Instead of praying by the mind of me, he says, I'll do both. I'll do both. After he's talked about praying in tongues and even psalming, that's instrumental playing with or without vocals. So, uh, wow, praying and also psalming, right? Not just singing, but maybe playing your instrument uh, while you're while you're in tongues. You know, like how do you do that? Well, I'm a drummer. I can sing and play at the same time. A lot of instruments can sing and play at the same time. They had a lot of stringed instruments. But what about wind instruments? You can pray in tongues inside your head. I, I can. I'm doing it right now as I'm speaking to you. I can hear those words inside my head. So I can have, let the Holy Spirit that belongs to me pray. He says, I will let the Holy Spirit that belongs to me pray in his language. Not just using my fruitful, productive mind. The mind, right, likes to pray, right? But he says, I will do it by the means of my spirit that belongs to me. This is not talking about some human spirit. It's talking about the spirit. Context is everything. You always can know by the Greek language and by the context. Well, this is what the Lord tells me, which is even amazing. He says, that's what you saw in the dream. That communication that was going on back and forth was in code. It was all war code. So we know in all the wars, <clears throat> the, the enemy is listening. They're intercepting our radio waves. And they're listening to everything that's going on. We do the same thing. But we have to break their code. Well, these, this code is the language of the Holy Spirit. It's the language of God. And it's a language that the Holy Spirit knows and the angels know. It's in code. But the enemy does not know what that means. So they, are, they have absolutely no idea what is going on. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely no idea what's going on. Hold on a second. So as an old friend of mine works works the park here, picks up the trash from all the people coming across the border. Just literally so much trash, unbelievable. So, so that was my friend Vern. Vernon. He's picking up all the baskets and everything from all the transients. Just total chaos out here. You know, ever since January 2020, man, whoo, this place has just gone downhills. And every, all the police know it. I talk to all the police. They know, man, they know what's what's going on. Anyway, so the, this communication's all in code. So he says, when you pray in tongues, the Spirit, right, the Holy Spirit within you, is praying the perfect will, the perfect plans, right, the perfect war codes, to the other angels that are behind enemy lines. That's what's happening. 
we are participating. Koinonia means to participate or join in, partner uh, in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So he says, I want you to do this. I want you to pray uh, for, for it, by the means of the Spirit, which is perfect enemy plans to call down carpet bombs, right? The Moab's mother of all bombs, to call down fire from heaven against the enemy in your life. And I want you to do that right now. That's what he says. I want you to do that right now. So it's like two o'clock in the morning and I'm going, okay, I'm pretty sleepy, but I'm just said, okay. So I just, I kept praying in tongues in bed until somewhere along the line, I fell asleep and much better day, much better day, right? Much better day. I feel much better. So he says, this is part of your warfare. It's very important. It's, it's one of the only offensive weapons, right? It's an offensive weapon. It's the sword of the Spirit. So pick up that sword of the Spirit, praying, it says habitually or routinely. I think it even says at, in all seasons, at all times. In other words, not just once in a while. Make this a habit, a lifestyle. And go for it, Mike. Go for it. Because this is the sword of the Spirit. This is where the, the Spirit of God gets to call the holy angels to do some serious damage on the enemy. And he says, I want you to do that for your health, for this attack on your health. The, the enemy comes to, to what? Steal. John 10.10. 10. Jesus said this. Enemy comes to steal, take stuff away from you, or to sacrifice yourself to him to sacrifice that's the next word to destroy pollute or corrupt that's another way to translate that he wants he's so full of ego he just wants to put you he wants to sacrifice you and then the last one is he would he would really like to just kill you permanently this is drag you down into hell he wants to do that drag you down into hell destroy you permanently So, you know, this is not good. And see, see, Jesus said that I came to give you life and life abundantly. That's what he said right after that verse. Well, how do we get that life abundantly? Well, we got to take up our sword of the Spirit. It's ours, right? It's been given to us. The Spirit of God has been given to, to Christians, not to the world. Nope, the world does not know the Holy Spirit. But we know the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to take up that sword and how do we do that? He says, praying in all seasons or all times, however you want to say it, by the means of the Spirit, which he defines as tongues, as he defines as tongue. This was common knowledge. He talks a lot about tongue, tongues. I have a tongues page because I didn't used to believe in any of that. Then I started looking into it and I went, uh oh, I'm way off track here. You know, it's, it's talked a lot about. First Corinthians 12. Uh, 13, 14, 12 and 14 a lot, but a lot of other places too. So check into that, because here he's saying, if you want to do some serious battle, we're talking laying waste, the, the, the angels are at, for your beck and call, but you're going to listen to the Spirit, right? They're getting their commands from the Spirit so that the enemy won't know it. So speaking in English, boy, oh boy, I don't know if that's so good, because... They understand English. <laughs> they understand English very well, the demons and, and the angels. They understand all the languages of men very well. So they're hearing hearing your plans. So, But if you pray by the means of the Spirit, the Spirit, they're not going to hear His plans. They don't even know what His plans are. And they're perfect plans. They always get their job done. It says the rhema word of God never comes back void. It's the rhema word, not written word. Not Logos messages. Uh, it's the directly spoken right then and there word of God. That's the bread of life that we can live on, he says. So there's go look at the Rhema page. Rhema is not written down. Never is. Once it's written down, it's not Rhema. It's, it's a message. It has to be analyzed, read. There's a lot of issues with that. A lot of people have issues with reading and writing and all that stuff. But the Rhema word of God can go right inside a person just like it did for me so i hope that helps you guys i'm very encouraged by this i wanted to share 
this real victory. And it all comes down to seeing by the means of the Spirit, seeing words and hearing words. Sometimes I hear words, sometimes I see words. I see pictures worth a thousand words, right? So go for it. Absolutely. I just wanted to share that with you. It's very exciting. All right. Bye-bye.